In today's video, we are going to be reviewing the whole Parker Asahi Synthetic Rubber Cutting Board Collection. Fine, maybe not the whole collection, but I mean, come on, nearly. There are seven boards here from two different lines, from two different target audiences in two colors. That's a lot going on. But before we dive into my thoughts and opinions about these boards, a big thank you to Rocky Tsujio from HK LLC for providing me with all the products before you and well, some products you can't quite see here because <clears throat> they are in another video. HNK LLC is a family owned business with more than 30 years of experience in the realm of tools, but most important to you, the viewers, in kitchen related items such as cutting boards, glassware, kitchen accessories, whetstones, and more. Now, if like me, you're curious as to why HNK LLC is actually really simple. Rocky's father, Hiroshi Tsujio, started the company over 30 years ago. There's the H from Hiroshi, and while his wife, Kazuko, then lends her K to the name to make it H and K. I love when things make sense. If by the end of the video you decide you are interested in purchasing these boards, their sister company, Banzai Boys Trading, sells the consumer focused boards on Amazon US. Canada and Australia. In a former cutting board video, I mentioned how I can't have an opinion on a quality synthetic rubber cutting board because I did not own one. Well, that has now changed. I know most of you here are already thinking, Frankie, what's the difference between Hasegawa and Parker Asahi, both titans in the synthetic cutting board world? Well, in short, the difference is that the Hasegawa board design comprises of a wood core sandwiched in between polymer plastic boards, whereas Parker Asahi is synthetic rubber all the way through. One material, the entire depth of the board, both presents some advantages and disadvantages, and I'm definitely not here to argue about those as today is all about Parker Asahi. Asahi cutting boards are made in Japan in Fukaya, I always get that wrong, Fukaya City. Saitama Prefecture to be exact. Before you are seven cutting boards from two different lines, consumer and professional. So what's the difference? Easy, the professional series are made exactly like the consumer and can be found even with similar dimensions, but they have the addition of wood powder mixed with the synthetic rubber to change the cutting feel of the board. More on that a little bit later. You can tell the professional from the consumer boards as they are a wee tad darker and have specks in them. Those specks being the elusive, not too sure what wood powder is, compound. Is it purely cork cambium from the tree bark? Is it the whole tree ground as a powder? Is it a specific species of tree? I'm probably overcomplicating this, but again, as a former wildlife biologist, I'm curious and I like to know these things. Anyhow, the other noticeable difference is before you is two of the boards are black. Why? Because black boards are cool and that's the end of it. So now that you know all this, here's a comparison showing the consumer board, professional with wood powder and professional black with wood powder. The professional boards are also available in a variety of different colors. Each color recommended to be used for a specific set of tasks so that you can color code your prep work. Kind of cool if you have the space for more than one board and aren't in a rush when prepping. Or also, just personal preference, get a different color board because you think it looks cool. No different than any other fashion decision we make every single day. Striving for cool. That's all that matters sometimes. Another thing you'll notice right away about the Asahi boards is their shape, being much longer than deep. And this is to accommodate small kitchens, and workspaces, but also professional kitchens on the working bench. They even have cutting boards up to 2,000 meters or two meters, if that gives you an idea of the design concept reasoning for their dimensions. Asahi boards are like your 17 to nine aspect ratio compared to most boards, which are closer to your four, three aspect ratio for you content creators out there. Lastly, before I talk about what's in front of me, I really do appreciate the hard work in their pamphlets that went into demonstrating why these boards are reputable and worthy of their price tags. Here's some footage and a screenshot showing the type of rigorous multi-replicative studies their boards go through to demonstrate why they are a high quality product. In each board test, the knife is a fixed variable, a Tojiro Yoto. Each time they do the cut test, it's a brand new knife. They then look at the board cross sections under a microscope 
And same with the knife edge, they explored the damage at the micron level. One thing I did notice about this test is that the data is conclusive, but two factors are a little bit strange. A. It is clear from the microscopic view that we are looking at an edge grain wooden board. Would have loved to see this test done on an end grain. And B. Why spruce as a wood type? Hanoki, a cypress, and evergreen is one of the most commonly used woods in Japan for cutting boards. So why spruce? Doesn't seem reflective of the culture and seems a little random. So, the question we've all been waiting for, why use a synthetic cutting board at all, or in my own case, why would I choose a synthetic cutting board over my wooden cutting boards? Easy, I know myself. I like to take care of my things. Monthly, I condition my wood cutting boards so they stay nice and sealed, moist, and don't dry in this desert-like Edmonton climate. But, I don't like to cut anything hot on my wooden cutting boards, or anything too juicy or avoid needing to use a damn cloth to wipe it down, therefore drying it out. I don't like to cut raw protein either on wood, which means I've been using my plastic cutting boards mainly to butcher chicken, fillet fish, cut pizza on it, or even cut beets so that the plastic board gets stained over my more expensive wooden cutting boards. So that's how I'm approaching this. Where is my need and how do these boards help address my needs? Now. For what's in front of me and some immediate reviews, top to bottom. We have the rounded corner with whole black consumer serving board. It came wrapped nice and simple in plastic and measures 300 by 200 by 8 millimeters. A soft board used for cutting cheese, making it a bit of a charcuterie board and used for serving. Personally, I don't know how useful the hole is for serving, and it also takes up real estate for cutting and placing food items because your fingers kind of get in the way since they're curling onto the board. Also, personally, I've now adopted this as my donut cutting board as it's super soft on the edge of my knife. So, though I may not use it for cheese, as I also find it a little bit small of a serving board when I think charcuterie, I think lots of items, cheeses, olives, compotes, varieties of cured meats, could fit on here, but it'd have to be a small portion. This board does feel small for that type of task. Just the regular Asahi boards as they are all really light to do the job. Now, the next three boards are all consumer boards of various lengths, widths, but of the same thickness, 13 millimeters. All arrive simply wrapped in plastic. We have the medium, 380 by 210 by 13 millimeters, the large, 400 by 230 by 13 millimeters, and the LL for large, large, which is 420 millimeters long. Reminder, the consumer boards don't have the wood powder within, so they feel more high-pitched, tumpy in a way. The very first time I used one of these, the large, I believe, I used it for Supreme in Orange, and I was immediately impressed. So much denser than I would ever have thought. I used the medium as well to cut a potato, I wasn't quite sure what to expect, but I didn't expect to love it right away. The feel and feedback was great, the sound on the medium, the large and the large large, a wee bit annoying on the ears, but nothing I can't handle. As for uses, easy. The medium immediately decided that it's now, because of the size and weight, going to be my go-to camping cutting board. I've since getting these boards discarded my two lesser plastic cutting boards, including even the high quality Costco plastic cutting board I've been using for chicken butchery. More on that later. About these three boards, all at 13 millimeters thick, I do find the size difference almost negligible and almost too precise. I mean, between the medium and large, we're talking a 20 millimeter or two centimeter difference. That's tiny, so I don't think that's a necessary size. I don't think anyone's kitchen is that precise, and Asahi can probably save a few million dollars and just remove that mold from production, in my humble opinion. Final thoughts on the consumer boards. Honestly, really like them and a great introduction for my Into What Comes Next, the professional series. Now, the next three are all professional series, which as a reminder means they come with the wood powder within to mimic the cutting feel of wood cutting boards, supposedly less high-pitched and more muddled sounds. And something else I did omit to mention earlier, the professional series also comes in a variety of thicknesses, whereas the consumer boards are all 13 millimeters, except the serving board at 8 millimeters. Now, I don't have the packaging of these on camera, but essentially they arrived in very nice, tight-fitting cardboard boxes. 
as opposed to being wrapped in plastic. Nothing crazy, just protection where protection is needed. So, in front of you are three professional boards. The first professional board before you is the black professional cutting board, a recent addition at 450 by 250 by 13 millimeters like the earlier consumer boards. I was super excited to use this on meat so that the board just doesn't look as nasty with the sauces or blood. The next two cutting boards are professional series, both at 500 millimeters by 250, with the only difference being their thickness, the top being 15 millimeters, the bottom being 20. In my opinion, I've now been using all seven boards. The 20 millimeter thickness professional board is really where it's at. For starters, I've decided to become my go-to chicken butchery board. Though not as wide as the Costco plastic cutting board I've been using for years, I just love the heft of the board, the thickness really lends itself well to cutting feedback, and it's light enough I can just carry it to the sink, clean it when I'm done, and there you have it. Just listen to the sound when cutting a white onion on this 20mm board. So Frankie, what do you think of the Parker Asahi cutting boards? Thanks for asking that Frankie, that's a really good question. So in short, my thoughts, if I had to choose out of these seven easily, easily, I would without a doubt keep three. The medium consumer cutting board for camping, as well as my small fruit work like Orange Supreme, super light, great size for packability, easy to clean, and big enough for my uses. This guy right here, especially considering when camping I bring containers with me for food so I can just kind of shovel the onions back into a Tupperware and so forth. Next, I'd 100% keep the black professional cutting board for fish butchery, cutting cooked meats, cutting my pizza. The cutting feel is nice and I'm just really digging the black color because fashion sense and also less prone to showing stains. Lastly, as you've guessed it, the professional 20 millimeter thick board is as close as you can get to not missing your wooden cutting board. Bell peppers, celery, onion, everything just felt right on that board. I'm one who will never get rid of my wooden and grain cutting board because I like how they look and feel. It just feels right. I use some really nice custom bougie knives and cutting on wood feels like an extension of that uh, bougie-ness, you know? But synthetic rubber boards definitely have their place and I can see that now. It's not all glory. I do have two or three pieces of constructive feedback. One, I don't really understand why they didn't come with tiny little feet. I can understand that when one side is used really well, you can just flip it over. But given their rigorous test cuts, 50,000 cuts, which even if I make that many cuts ever in one single area in my lifetime, they've proven the damage is minimal. So why no feet, Asahi? The board when just on the counter is not really stationary unless there's a tea towel. On my wooden cutting board, still felt slippery. Not to mention that the sound the board makes will alter slightly depending on the surface underneath it as sounds travels through it into the next object. My suggestion is even just little tiny 3M type feet that come in the box or with the plastic wrap boards, so you can have the option to add them or not. Not much height is needed, just little, little rubber feet to go with the rubber board so that it actually is stable in all contexts. Now, I do understand that in a professional setting, this might not be ideal. But just a suggestion, and if Parker Asahi himself would come back to me personally and say, Frankie, in a professional setting, these slide well into the workbenches. Fine, maybe fair, but then you have consumer boards, which I'm assuming are for consumers, not professionals. So just add the feet. Two, the boards do stain quite easily. Now their care and clean instructions might suggest there are two solutions to this. But I'm going to be honest and flat out say I don't really agree with either, whether for the consumer or professional. We all remember the label on bleach bottles. It's a harmful solution and not the ideal, even if mixed one part per 100, for example, on a tool that has your food prepped on. As for solution two, hand sanding or planing, also not a great solution to the problem. If you have a planer at home, Honestly, good on you. This isn't the case for over 99% of people. I can bet my life on it. As for hand sanding, last thing you want to do is create valleys in your board. 
Like with wet zones, a perfectly flat board ensures even cutting contact with the board and doesn't risk chipping your knife if your knife enters one of these so-called depressions. So just be aware that these boards do stain quite easily and it's just the reality of the product. First time I cut an orange on, I believe, the medium cutting board, it immediately stained. An imprint of the orange standing up essentially appeared and it was there for less than two minutes. I cleaned the board right away with soap and water, but the stain remained. Lastly, small detail, but a detail nonetheless. If you count on getting one of these, make sure you use a proper, real microfiber cloth to dry. I was using good old classic kitchen towels to dry these. And the fibers were not only catching a bit, but also leaving the fiber residues behind, which is annoying to say the least. When I swapped to a microfiber cloth, it was better. But I've already gotten into the habit, to be honest, of just simply allowing them to dry in the dish rack. They're light and it's just easy to do. So, here we are at the end of the video. Or is it? Take a look at that timeline. There's lots of minutes left. That's because in order to give you the best possible Asahi Parker synthetic rubber cutting board review, I spent lots of time actually using them, filming them in action. So though you saw snippets of the footage up until now, if you just want to chill for the next minutes and just watch some really cool knives cut stuff, and I promise you there's some cool knives, then enjoy the last part of this video. Otherwise, Rocky and H&K LLC Thank you once again for these boards. Spoiler, Rocky sent me another product to use in review, so keep your eyes on the channel in the next month or so to see what that product may be. Thanks again, as usual, viewers, for watching. If you like what you see, feel free to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and share the video. Now, enjoy the food demo.
This is the thickest of the professional cutting boards from Asahi. It's the 20 millimeter. I was testing it to see if in fact the thicker the board, the more the shock is absorbed through the board and makes it feel soft. Honestly, I'm super, super surprised and impressed. I use one of my most delicate cutting edge knives, the Hado Sumi Blue Sumigashi Damascus B1 from Chef's Edge. And uh, yeah, it honestly did not feel as plasticky as I thought it would. In fact, I'm not sure what it felt like. It definitely didn't feel like wood. I wouldn't even say it felt like rubber, but it felt soft. And to me, that's what's most important. So this is 20 millimeter professional board, uh, Asahi Park. It definitely took the aggressive cuts really well. Me an obvious cutting sound sounds a lot more tingy, bang, 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 bang. If I had a choice, professional series all the way, whether black or beige, um, the sound annoys me a little bit. It actually sounds plasticky.
give attention to the camera. Oh, it's a Shiba. Mmm, delicious cat.